glaucoma. There is a mystery here, and this is what the researchers really want to look at. Even though fluid pressure in the eye can be adequately controlled, nerve damage still proceeds. So basically, the researchers had to basically speculate on what else, what piece of the puzzle are they missing? Well, there was a lot of circumstantial evidence up to this point leading up to citocholine, otherwise commonly known as CDP choline and is commercially available and on many shelves. So what they did is they constructed an animal model to test this hypothesis out. And what they discovered is citocholine plays a huge role it's substantially slowing the degradation of the optic nerve, at least in this animal model. So effective was it, so effective, that even after they stopped supplementing the diet of the mice or the animals, it still continued to have impact on slowing that degradation of the optic nerve down, even after they stopped administering oral doses of citocholine. So with that in mind, let us proceed into the animal study. Now, this is an animal study, so they're not going to be uh, discussing human dosaging. However, though, I am going to refer back to a study from 2017, which speculated on possible dosaging protocols for individuals in reference to CDP choline. That's towards the end. But let's get right into the research as follows. Glaucoma may be more than just an issue of eye pressure. However, when we proceed forward into this research article itself. However, past studies have shown the condition to continue to worsen, the condition continues to worsen, even after eye pressure has been controlled. The connection between eye pressure buildup and impaired vision remains poorly understood, to reiterate. Published on April 13th in the Neurotherapeutics, the new study showed that ingesting oral, the compound citicoline, commonly known to as CDP choline, restored optic nerve neural signals between the brain and the eye to near normal levels. Now keep in mind, this was study was a very short duration, I think like three weeks. So who knows how it may have impacted it even went further. But now we have route to continue studies eventually, hopefully to people. But to proceed as follows. Between the brain and the eye to near normal levels in the study of rats. Naturally produced in the brain, but also commercially available, citocholine is a major source of choline, a building block in the membranes that line the nerve cells and enhance nerve cell communication. While study results confirm past findings that elevated eye pressure contributes to nerve damage in glaucoma, it also showed that citocholine reduced vision loss in rats without reducing fluid pressure in the eye. So that is an intriguing uh, tidbit of information because what you're looking at is the eye pressure is staying the same, yet it is slowing the degradation of the nerve in the eye itself on its own. To proceed, quote, our study suggests that citocholine protects against glaucoma through a mechanism different from that of standard treatments that reduce fluid pressure. Since glaucoma interrupts the connection between the brain and the eye, we hope to strengthen it with new types of therapies. According to the researcher, go a little further into the article itself. Chan and his team tested whether increasing levels of that chemical would slow or even stop the degradation of the optic nerve and other regions of the brain involved in vision. Using a comprehensive study of the eye-brain connection to glaucoma, his team found that giving rats oral doses of citocholine over a three-week period protected nerve tissues and reduced vision loss sustainably even after the treatment stopped for another three weeks. For the study, the researchers stimulated glaucoma and several dozen rats using a clear gel to build a eye pressure mildly without otherwise blocking the vision. Then the team measured the structural integrity and the amount of function of physiological activity along the visual pathway using MRI scans. The research also tracked the rodent's visual behavior to test the clarity of the vision of the eye. The study showed that for rats with mildly elevated eye pressure, the tissues that connect the eye and the brain, including the optic nerve, decayed for up to five weeks after the injury occurred. Meanwhile, nerve structure breakdown in the citocholine treated rodents slowed as much as 74%, which indicated that the chemical had a protective effect on nerve cells 
quoting the authors. Now that they have the information in hand, now they can proceed to more in-depth and potentially longer studies and hopefully move to human trials. So they recognize that acetylcholine, irregardless, irregardless of nerve or eye pressure, still protected the optic nerve, which at least, according to medical professionals, can yield a very good complementary therapy or possibly even a therapy on its own. Again, that's up to a medical professional, not I. But still, it is still a compelling, compelling study in light to the benefit of that eye-brain connection utilizing acetylcholine. Now we're going to go to an older study. Now, I'm usually not a big fan of correlation. However, though, I know a lot of individuals are going to have questions that are going to arise what is the oral dose, safety, toxicity, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to link both studies. The primary study here in the animal model and the study which was basically a review or I should say almost an independent article onto its own in speculation to the benefits of acetylcholine a little bit later on or down the YouTube channel in the quote section. But to proceed, here we go. Exogenous choline administered by ingestion or injection is hydrolyzed and dephosphorylated, dephosphorylated in order to, from, to form cytidine and choline, which resynthesize CDP choline in signed brain cells. It has a proven neuroprotective effect in Alzheimer's disease. It's, a, it's just an amazing substance overall. Alzheimer's disease, stroke, and Parkinson's disease, as well as in, see this is back in 2017, so you see that the brain is beginning to think in the research facilities. Progressive, uh, well, as well in glaucoma and amblyopia. Cytocholine as a neuroprotector for those patients with progressive glaucomata uh, glaucomatous, glaucomatous, glaucomatous <laughs> disease in spite of well-controlled intraocular pressure. The purpose of this review, the one we're quoting right now in reference to dosaging, was to outline the main features of acetylcholine and the evidence of its effects in glaucoma. Further into the study, here is basically human dosaging that they're referred to in reference to safety and toxicity. It is a safe molecule, I'm quoting, with only few adverse effects, such as digestive intolerance, after oral administration. The therapeutic dosage in humans is between 500 to 2,000 milligrams. For those not familiar, half a gram to two grams acetylcholine daily. That is an amazing, amazing aspect of information. It reference to looking at protecting the eye in glaucoma outside of just fluid pressure. So remember too, the acetylcholine had its impact and still protected optic nerve degeneration from occurring or slowed it down by 74%, even without taking into account a reduction in eye pressure itself. That is just fascinating. It also opens the door to new discoveries in regard, even without the acetylcholine, because obviously acetylcholine had some impact, reduced the nerve degradation uh, without necessarily reduction in eye pressure. So it, asks, it brings up more questions. And hopefully, better yet, better therapies, and still possibly even the best in end to this very, very not so good degenerative disease, which could benefit tons and tons of people around the world. But if that's what it is, the links will be there for you to look into your own and delve into it. Great research. Thank you to the researchers. Also too, before I conclude, those that want to visit us on the weekends, we do the data analytic part. Uh, we covered this last weekend on Saturday night, the Lancet. Lancet did a wonderful, wonderful uh, study review into the absolute risk reduction in reference to certain vaccines and the particular pandemic. And it was quite enlightening, the uh, absolute risk reduction. For example, you'll hear things like numbers needed to vaccinate for, to prevent uh, one person from getting sick, let's say from COVID. And for example, the Pfizer was 119. And that was in the phase three trials. The Israeli study, I think, ended up being 217 needed to vaccinate to prevent one infection. But again, an infection could still be asymptomatic. But however, though, that is for our Saturday or Sunday morning crew, which you're more than welcome to visit. Again, Ralph's Channel signing off. Gratitude. 
links will be there. Acetylcholine, again, talk to your medical professional. Seems to be pretty common, commercially available, not a problem to get a hold of. But then, yet, if you yield benefit and help people, the video is all worth it. Catch you all next time. See you then. Bye.